excuse me, brothers. Uh, <coughs> I, uh, I have hesitated to sharing some of the things that uh, I've come into because of my uncertainty as to the depth uh, um, the truth but at the same time I, I, I can't continue to deny uh, how they relate to a lot of the other things that I've come to understand that are true about the, the gospel or the truth concerning the kingdom of heaven. So, uh, uh, Jacob's Wells, uh, Jacob's Well, which is, uh, uh, was sealed, uh, the water that flows from that well, like the springs that break forth, uh, waters of refreshment, those connections, all right, that was shown, I was come to understand that, you know, when, when it says that we were sealed with the spirit of promise until the day of redemption, I've come to understand that that seal of the Spirit until the day of redemption is the same as the seal that was placed upon Jacob's well. <clears throat> so these springs of living water, I believe, begin to uh, start to come forth. So um, I, I want to try to share, in my journey, uh, I, I have gone to a far country in my spiritual walk and journey uh, in the Lord. And uh, I don't mean that in the natural, I mean that in the spiritual sense. Far country. I've been shown some wonderful things that, in part, okay, is like I've been trying to share with you, I believe that whatever has been given to us in part, is about to end and we're about to come into the fullness of those things which is uh, it's not uh, it's not going to be in dreams and visions it's going to be in the spirit uh, in the uh, spirit of wisdom and knowledge and revelation in the spirit of wisdom and revelation because revelation means to reveal or uncover Kind of like removing the seal from Jacob's well, or until the day of redemption, which I believe that's the dawning of that day which we have entered into, and that the mind calendar believes are those dated by man, okay, that a new beginning should take place. Now, <clears throat> I also, when I shared the parable, showed you where we're at the point where the thousand year rule and reign of Jesus is about to begin. Jesus Christ, the rule of Christ, and reign. You'll notice that there's a stone, a rock, that comes out of the sky. It could be a rock, spirit, okay? When you look at things in the natural, in the literal mind, you're not going to see the things that are being shown to us in the spiritual. So when you read it in the natural, attempt to step back and allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to you in the spiritual what that rock might mean. Now I told you about the rock that I stood upon. And uh, the... Uh, I got a little message coming on here. I don't know. We're starting now. Postpone. As long as it doesn't interfere with what I thought. Uh, that's just a double trying to keep you from sharing what I had to share. Uh, but that rock that's coming from the sky or air, that rock, it smashes 
the toes of iron and clay. Now, I liken that onto the dawning of the day of which the revealing or unsealing in the revelation, in wisdom, in revelation, and knowledge that the kingdom of heaven and the fullness thereof would begin to be revealed to us. Now you have to remember, these, this is a faith walk, my brother. Uh, no one can deny the special anointing upon the brethren in the establishing of the church. And I've mentioned to you before, they were real people being used of by the Holy Spirit of God, by God, to establish a work. They did not finish the work. They established it. That's why they're called the foundation. And other things are now being revealed and have been since then in spiritual understandings. I'm going to share something with you that I received a long time ago. I mean, I think this is kind of part of my, that journey into a far country that I was taken on. And I'll tell you why I came into it, what was behind it. A long time ago I had this dream. When I first came into the, uh, received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I had this dream that I was taken up above the earth not that far, but far enough so that I could see that there was this great big tall, six foot tall and taller hedgerows of bushes. Kind of like a maze. Have you ever seen a, you know, a maze where they, they put the mice inside of a box that mice can't see over the wall? Okay? Well, that's how these hedgerows of bushes were. And the mice weren't mice. It was people. And they couldn't see on the other side of the wall that was built up around them. And that's what the Lord had me to see. That they were wandering around aimlessly or lost and could only see within the area that was given to them to be at. They couldn't see beyond the hedgerows that had been placed upon them. So it could also represent Balls of division, you know how people are with the different churches. They they can only see what's inside of their area <laughs> that's walled up around by their denominational doctrines and traditions. Amen. So they can't, they don't, they're not able to see into somebody else's walled up area, and somebody else's walled up area can't see out of there, so on and so forth. You understand what I'm saying? Well, that was one of the very first dreams I ever got. And I told you, uh, you know, it's, I got started on this path right from the get. And so because of that, when I would read the Word of God, I was surely looking for something more than what was written just on the surface. Amen? <laughs> Who wouldn't? So when I would start to read, I would study. I would look very deeply into these things. I would, uh, I would really want to see, wow, what's the... Uh, what are they trying to say here? Not just the moral surface or the literal. And what? What's the spiritual context in this thing? Because I really, I, uh, oh, Father God, it's just so much greater than anything that you can come to understand on the literal surface. It's so much greater. And I believe that greater is what Jesus was expressing to us when he would use the idea of, you know, about uh, marriage and adultery. You know, uh, they said uh, him who commits adultery, blah, okay, it's a breaking of the command. But Jesus said, if you even look upon a woman to want her, you know, it was greater than. Everything about Jesus was greater than. Now, I don't know if many of you understand what a Kabbalist is or where the Kabbalah came from. And I don't want to take you off into that. There is a fantasy land of Kabbalah. And, but when you glean from a, a, a branch of something, 
uh, let's say you're studying um, any particular subject, okay, but there are other books, okay, that are related to that same field of study that uh, those who have had experience with it and dealt with it, uh, they, they've they written about it, and so there's, there's things in that other book, besides the one you're reading, that you can glean certain aspects from to help you in your study in the book that you're studying. And that's how the Father had me to come to learn and understand things that I believe he's revealed to me. I would take all these other writings from different people, and one of those things was the Kabbalist, or the Kabbalah, uh, the, you know, uh, they have a nine-candle uh, menorah, I believe that represents the, the spiritual aspect or the mystical writings. Because if you look in the Word of God, it, uh, in uh, the New Testament, it tells us about the mystical. And we want to really, you know, it became, let me go to the, uh, let me show you what I saw. Now, I never really took the time to expand upon this to really get into depth, but maybe some of you brothers that have really are able to get in there because I have my gift, I have my understanding, my what was given to me, but there are other gifts that are just as great and just as important that I believe that we're going to all begin to start to share these things and use them for the greater glory of God. Some of you are you able to take what somebody opens up and really develop it. I mean, I've, I've listened to some beautiful things that some of you brothers have shared that I knew the under, the basics. I knew the like the doorway, the foundation. But you guys would sit down and really seek out those scriptures. So don't think that I ever a scribe who is a scribe for the point of having it in his head is one thing. But a person who has a, a, a the gift of uh, being able to get into this thing and really connect the dots and stuff like that from a sincere heart. Amen, Jesus, brother. Ah, praise God. We're all parts of this body. So I want to get it out real quick. Maybe some of you can develop it further. I was reading the book of Genesis, and I looked at that river that flowed from Eden and then broke up into four parts. And I also had read about the two different trees on either side of the river of life. Well, it dawned on me that our heads, if you look at a, 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 bi a biology, there's a split between them. There's two sides. And science has told us that one side, the left side, is for the higher thought or artistic, esoteric thinking. And the other side is for the concrete. Yeah, <laughs> You know, there's a lot of people out there thinking in the concrete. They don't, they don't think in the spiritual, the as, esoteric things too much. But anyway, two sides. And the river, <coughs> our spinal cord, the fluid that runs from the, I don't know, Garden of Eden? Two trees. Amen. On either side of the river of life, the spinal cord goes out to four rivers, left, right, left, right. So when I saw that, amen, it's coming up uh, on 15 minutes, so I'm going to have to, uh, if the Father uh, uh, allows, I'll share some more on another tape. But I just wanted to give that right quick, amen. Uh, the Lord's been dealing with me about that, and Jacob's wells being unsealed, and different things like that, so... Uh, I can only believe that it's okay to start to share some of these things now, because, amen. So, uh, I love you, brother, and uh, there'll be another one come up. I think we'll try to share a little bit more about the kingdom of heaven. Amen? All right.